Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the newly opened Fontainebleau where we're going to Poppy Steak for dinner. Poppy Steak is the premier steakhouse here at the Fontainebleau and I'm really looking forward to showing you all. Let's go on inside. All right, everybody, here we are seated at Poppy Steak at the Fontainebleau. Beautiful restaurant. You have a classic Hollywood era decor here, super chic and modern, really classy. Absolutely stunning environment in here. We have dim lighting and really lively music. It's quite a vibe. Now, Poppy Steak has its origins in Miami, and I'm guessing by the name, it's where Sugar Daddy's come to impress everybody. Let's go and take a look at what they're offering, starting with the drink menu. So here's the drink menu at Poppy Steak. It's very long, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take brief images of each page. Feel free to take a pause in the video if you would like to look for your favorite drink. So here are your champagnes. Here's the burgundy. Here are the Bordeaux. Here are the Merlots. And there is your alcohol list here at Poppy State. Lots of very, very expensive options. Let's go and see what they have to eat next. Alrighty, and here's your food menu at Poppy Steak. Here are the starters for the table. You've got pretzel bread, steak and eggs, and uh, shellfish. Here are your cold and salads. Looks really good. And then the hot appetizers as well. Here's a cocktail list for you guys. Looks like all these cocktails are $20. And it looks like wine by the glass as well. Here are your entrees. As well as your steak options. And then here are the premium steak options. That beef case is kind of the signature item here. And then all of your accompaniments and sides. I would say that's a pretty standard looking steakhouse menu. However, there are definitely a few intriguing options today. And you know how it goes in my videos. Every restaurant is a buffet if you're willing to pay. So we're gonna get a nice variety and together we're gonna see what this restaurant's all about. Don't go anywhere, appetizers are coming up first. All right, everyone, now our first appetizer has arrived, and these are the chill prawns. Absolutely enormous, served with a remoulade as well as some cocktail sauce. And this is looking really good. Let's give it a taste. Got a nice big prawn here. We'll get a little bit of this cocktail sauce on it first, and we give this a taste. Oh, yeah, that's actually really good. Super succulent prawns here. Little bit of that briny flavor really coming through. And in general, very satisfying to eat. The cocktail sauce has a nice sweetness to it as well as a bit of kick. A nice use of the horseradish there. I actually really like those chill prawns. And next up, let's add this remoulade sauce and we give this a shot as well. Oh yeah, not bad. Very creamy with this remoulade sauce. It's very smooth. Lots of herbs in there. I think I taste a little bit of tarragon, and just a hint of dill. There's just a little tartness to it, and it is enjoyable. Although I will say between the two, I think I like the cocktail sauce more. All in all though, I'm a fan of the chilled prawns. Alrighty folks, and the next appetizer that we got was the hamachi crudo. A beautiful yellow tail dish here, and they pour the ponzu at your table. And this is looking really good. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that is excellent. Right away you get the nice umami from the ponzu sauce, setting up a nice intro of salinity. You get a really satisfying crunch from those crispy shallots, which give a little bit of bite along with the chives. There is a citrus element here, coming from that ponzu sauce, 
really brightening up the bite. The flavor of the yellowtail itself is ultra delicate. Really nice mild flavor there. It all comes together very well. I'm a huge fan of this appetizer. Now my friends are joining me today. We got some cocktails here. Cheers to you all. Thank you so much for being in the video with us. All right, everyone, and our next appetizer that we're gonna be going in on are the crab cakes. You get a single lump crab cake here with an order. Got a little bit on the fork here. This is a pretty classic steakhouse dish. Let's see how this tastes. Oh yeah, that is really tasty. Beautiful crispy exterior. They've got a really great pan fry job. Not a lot of filler here. Tons of crab meat, and you really get that beautiful sweetness. It's seasoned simply but generously. You really get to taste that crab meat, and it's very flavorful. Now it is served alongside a Dijon mustard Brier Blanc, which provides just a little bit of bite while offering a little bit of a creaminess. It is good, this is a solid crab cake. All right folks, next up we're gonna try the Wagyu pastrami. This is served alongside a mustard sauce, and it looks incredible. I cannot wait to give it a try. Let's go in. Oh yes, that is delicious. There's an initial sweet glaze here. That's the first thing that you taste. Although quickly it evolves into a smoky flavor from that pastrami, which gives way to a beautiful savory note. The overall bite then transforms with the flavor of the black pepper coming from that beautiful crust. Now I'm told the pastrami is made over a course of 12 days between the brining, drying, and processing, and it really does show a perfect salinity here. It's savory, peppery, a little bit sweet, and the meat is so incredibly tender. I like it a lot. This is really unique and good pastrami. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of the mustard sauce on this. A nice, beautiful, light yellow hue. Let's give this a shot. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, that is really good. Introducing that mustard up front provides that little bit of spice that you're looking for that really amplifies the other flavors. Because you have the dichotomy between spicy as well as sweet and heat, you're really able to appreciate the distinctions. The savoriness of the pastrami really becomes much more enhanced when adding that mustard sauce. I absolutely love it. This is a great appetizer. All right, my friends, and those are the appetizers that we ordered today. I'm actually in love with this Wagyu pastrami. It's really good. My friends and I are gonna continue working on this and then we got entrees coming up next. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right everyone, now our first round of entrees are here and this is looking really good. We got the prime ribeye as well as their chicken, the Dover sole, and some truffle corn and Brussels sprouts. This is looking like a really great start to the entrees. Let's go in. Alrighty, first up we're trying the prime ribeye. We got this prepared medium rare and it looks cooked temperature. Nice pink center here. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's a good steak. A solid fatty cut here, it's very rich. They've developed a nice crust on the outside, providing a little bit of texture, a slight char flavor here. It's really delicious. They absolutely nailed the cook, solid medium rare here, and a very simple seasoning that really allows you to appreciate the flavor of the beef. I have no complaints, this is a good ribeye steak here. Alrighty, next up is the truffle jidori chicken. The skin was so crispy as I cut into this, and it looks really moist. Let's give it a shot. Oh my gosh, that chicken is incredible. That has to be one of the crispiest skins on a chicken I've ever had. It's so satisfyingly crunchy. This might be in the runnings for the juiciest chicken of the year. It's unbelievably moist. They let me know that they put a little bit of truffle butter underneath the skin to really help crisp it up during cooking, and it's magnificent. I absolutely love it. The truffle flavor here is very subtle, especially considering that they're using real shaved truffle. Such a beautiful, earthy, woodsy note coming from that. I must say, this is one of the most delicious chicken dishes I've had in a long time. Now, the truffle jidori chicken is served alongside some potatoes underneath, and these are feeling really crispy. Let's give these a taste. Oh, it's wonderful. Really crispy potatoes on the outside with nice soft flesh in the middle. 
They've been beautifully seasoned. While you get the great potato flavor, you also get that nice truffle herbiness. Starchy and satisfying, and really helps the overall dish with that chicken. I'm a big fan, I love this chicken dish. All right, next up is the Dover Sole, served in a brown butter sauce along with some capers. This is looking good, let's give it a taste. Yeah, that was really good. Very moist and flaky fish here. I actually really love the flavor of this sole. It has a nice oily richness to it. A very moist fish. It's a good robust flavor. Beautifully seasoned and nothing overpowers anything else. I love the nuttiness coming from the brown butter sauce here. Really giving that extra dimension to the fish. The capers provide a nice floral hit and there's some lemon here providing a bit of freshness as well as some acid. It is a good Dover sole dish, no serious complaints. All right, we're going in on some sides next. First up is the truffle corn. Nice looking cream corn here. I'm definitely looking forward to this. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's really good. It's a much more savory dish than I was initially expecting. It's not exactly the sweetness that you're expecting from a corn dish. The corn is well cooked, has a nice firmness to it while still allowing some chew. The cream sauce applied here has a nice salty pepperiness to it, and I absolutely love the truffle element. It's so subtle that its flavors come in waves in the bite, but the whole bite does end sweet as the natural corn flavor starts to take over. I'm a fan, I really like this corn dish. All right, folks, and the last bite to try from this first round of entrees is gonna be the Brussels sprout side. These actually smell incredible. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that is excellent. Those might be some of the best Brussels sprouts I've ever had. Initially, you get a subtle sweet flavor coming from the glaze here. I believe it's maple inspired. It then gives way to a nice spiciness coming from the sliced peppers here, right before you get a nice salty hit from the bacon. You get a nice treat of sweet, heat, and salty before it ends bitter from the natural flavors of the Brussels sprouts. It really is a nicely balanced, beautiful melody of flavors. I actually really like these a lot. These are solid Brussels sprouts. All right, everyone, and that's our first round of entrees. We're gonna go ahead and continue working on this, and then we got a huge surprise coming for you up next. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Alright everyone, so our second round of entrees are here, and here at Poppy Steak they have a $1,000 Wagyu Tomahawk Steak. I'm sure you saw the presentation, they make a huge show out of it, and while it is a lot of fun, it really comes down to the flavors. I had a ribeye steak earlier today, it was pretty good, and this steak is 10 times the price. Is it 10 times better? I guess we'll find out. Let's give it a shot. Okay, wow, that is really good. Rich doesn't even begin to describe the steak. It's so fatty, it's off the charts. Incredibly tender, it just melts in your mouth. It's incredibly flavorful, so incredibly rich. A very delicious steak for sure. A beautiful crust on the outside. I don't really have too many negative points about this steak. Now the steak is served alongside four sauces, although it really doesn't need it at all. Looks like there's something a little creamy, something a little tangy, a very akin to a Ne One sauce. There's a bit of a spicy sauce here, as well as a slightly sweet and spicy. But truth be told, really, the steak does not need sauces. It's just really good on its own. Now, is it worth 10 times the price of their normal ribeye? No, no, it's not. However, if you're a sugar daddy looking to flex on the rest of the restaurant, it's a really fun show and it is a good steak. All right, everyone, now the steaks are really good. Let's go in on the final sides next. First up, let's try the mashed potatoes. Very creamy here. Looks super smooth on my fork. Let's give this a taste. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's just fine. Super creamy mashed potatoes here, very velvety in texture. They're well seasoned enough. Certainly get a nice potato flavor here. I think it could use a tad extra richness, a little bit of extra butter to really brighten it up. I would say in general, this is probably the most standard side I've had today. Alrighty, next up it's the broccolini. Nice charred looking broccolini here. Let's give it a shot. You know, I'd say those are just okay. There's a good cook to the broccolini. A little firm on the outside, still soft on the inside. There's a decent char flavor here, a little bit of smokiness. There's also some lemon here giving some nice brightness and acidity. However, I would say the flavors are overall a little bit muted. While you taste the flavors I described, they're not very robust. I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it's my least favorite side of the day. All right, everybody, now the last bite I'm gonna be trying from the meal today is gonna be the cream spinach. It's a pretty good looking cream spinach here. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, not bad at all. The spinach has certainly been well cooked. They're soft, but they're not disintegrating. A nice flavor to that cream sauce. Provides a little bit of richness to counterbalance that flavor of the spinach. Though I wouldn't say there's anything truly outstanding about the recipe. I would say this one is fairly standard. But I am a fan of cream spinach. No real complaints with this one. All right, everyone, and that's going to be the main courses of our dinner tonight. My friends and I are going to go and continue working on this, and then a little bit later we'll look at the dessert menu. Don't go anywhere. Sweets are coming up next. All right, everyone, and I'm back, and we have a dessert menu here. Let me give you a view. So here is your dessert menu at Poppy Steak. Dark chocolate souffle sounds really good. It looks like they have a $1,000 baked Alaska here. I kind of feel like a $1,000 steak is enough. I don't know if I'm in the mood for a $1,000 dessert today. So I'm going to go ahead and get our order in. But for you at home, I'm going to make it up here right now. All right, everyone, and our dessert is here. This is looking really good. Let me give you a view. We got the chocolate souffle, and it was served along with the vanilla on glaze. Let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, that's really tasty. So incredibly airy, you would not believe the texture. Soft as a cloud does not even begin to describe what this is. Beautifully rich, deep chocolate flavor here. You really get that cocoa essence. There is a lovely creaminess coming from that vanilla anglaise, delivering a really delicious sweet vanilla flavor. The white truffles definitely grounds the flavor, providing a bit of a nutty contrast. It's airy, sweet, decadent, and very delicious. I'm a fan of this dessert. All right, everyone, and that does it for my dinner here at Poppy Steak at the Fontainebleau. Now, our dinner came out to $1,933 today before tip, and we certainly had an enjoyable meal. I believe this makes my most expensive video to date, although more than half of it was covered by a single steak. I thought the Wagyu pastrami was absolutely fantastic, and the truffle corn and Brussels sprout might be some of my favorite sides of the year. While the beef case steak was very tasty, I don't know if I would ever pay $1,000 for it again, because while it was better than that $100 ribeye, I wouldn't say it was 10 times better. Our server, Jenny, was absolutely fantastic and provided some of the most immaculate service I've ever received in a restaurant. Now, if you're looking for a really great upscale and super fun vibe steakhouse here in Las Vegas, Poppy Steak is a solid choice. Really fun vibes here at this restaurant. It really felt like I was at a club when they brought out that beef case. I don't remember the last time I've been that hype at a restaurant. It was really cool. Now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye.